underline the difference of what factors need to deserve your attention depending on the market condition. Now obviously when we're talking about the theoretical floor because relatively the daily earnings are much small, the port costs and bunker costs will play a significant role and at that point of time you want to pay attention to them. When the market takes off, even at today's prices, those proportions change dramatically. Between 2003 to 2008, barely anyone, notwithstanding the bunker volatility, barely anyone paid attention to the bunkers because they represented such a small component of the uh, overall freight cars. Now here you have a specific example of a voyage estimation. You can divide, and again I'm, I'm uh, very happy to discuss the details of, uh, of these calculations one on one, um, but shortly the voyage estimation could be divided into two phases. In the first phase you want to determine what's going to be your intake and what's going to be the duration of the voyage. In the second phase you want to figure out what will be your total cost and in the end of the day what's going to be the voyage, the voyage equivalent of that. Now going back to the beginning, why I think that this knowledge could prove useful to you. I mean obviously the buyers, especially in Southeast Asia, face reasonably significant challenges. I mean the first challenge is the transparency challenge. These are traits that are highly sensitive and for a number of reasons people do not want to blast the information on the businesses in the market and it goes to selective owners who depending on the uh, degree of closeness of the relationship may appreciate or not and may essentially take you for a ride. So you do want to know roughly what is the point of reference of the prevailing time charter rate and see how it corresponds with the voyage rate. And how do you do that? Essentially, you run a simple voyage calculation to identify what owner's returns are and compare them to the market. Obviously, you need to take into consideration, it's not a straight correlation, you need to also take into account various factors that are going to determine premiums and discounts. I mean, for example, if you're a buyer in Southeast Asia and you're looking at the route S2, which uh, essentially is a trip from uh, North Japan on the 52,000 toner via Pacific Northwest and redelivery Singapore Japan range, you may want to ask the owner to give you a reasonable discount to reflect the premium position of redelivery. A vessel that's going to finish uh, her voyage in Philippines or Indonesia is in a much better position to achieve better returns on the subsequent voyage. I mean, if you're in Indonesia, next door you have Kalimantan and you can load coal. Now, if I go to Taiwan and my next voyage is Indonesia, I have to ballast from Taiwan to Indonesia and I have to figure, I mean, I have to factor that cost in my calculation. So, if you're a grain buyer sitting in Indonesia, think about it. I mean, that's how you can optimize your cost. But, so that's the discount. Now premiums, obviously that's not necessarily the case for Southeast Asia, but there are areas that involve risk, war risk, and an owner is going to say, look, I mean, I'm not going to give you a voyage rate equivalent that is in straight correlation to the TC because you're going to take me to a war risk area or you can take me to an area that's affected by piracy and perhaps I can be uh, recompensated by corresponding war risk insurance, but maybe not. So I'm taking additional risk and I want you to price it in your rate. Now, simple rules for voyage economics for freight optimization. Uh, well, at the uh, risk of stating the obvious, economies of scale. Whenever you can, 
just as we discussed, uh, you see the, uh, the economies of scale on, uh, when you compare the Handymax and, and Panamax, right? It takes about the same amount of money to operate the two. So holding the voyage related cost constant, chances are your per ton rate is going to be far more competitive. But not necessarily always, and you also have to be aware of that. I mean, at the time of rapid changes in the market, for example, in 2003, when the Cape rates started going through, through the roof, a process that is called Cape splitting took place. And essentially, the, uh, the Panamax rate have gone up so high that it was more economical to ship in the intermediate term cargos on smaller ships to ports that could accommodate Panamax. And Philippines is a good example. I mean, I was involved in the Philippines business for a number of years, and let's say between 98 to 2003, we're doing 100% of our business to Marivelas on Panamax. And in 2004, 2005, uh, there were periods of time where it didn't make sense. So you want to be aware of that. Optimal positioning. Obviously, if you can, you want to align yourself with owners whose business models are complementary in nature with your voyage. For example, if there is an owner that over the long term has an established business of carrying cement from Asia to US West Coast, chances are you're going to be able to obtain more competitive rates from that owner than from, let's say, a, a generic quote that is going to be based on the calculation that factors in ballast from Japan. The other thing that you need to take into account are various risk factors such as lay days, size flexibility, and versus age. Lay days, okay, if, let's say if you're booking a cargo on a TBN, on a tonnage that, that is to be nominated, not on a named vessel with an operator, and you give him a 10-day spread, 10-day lay days, and you want him to book that cargo a month and a half in advance. I mean, that proposition involves high risk. Why? Because if he has a backup vessel of his own in mind, he doesn't know months and a half in advance whether that vessel is going to hit your ladies or not. And if it doesn't, he has to go to the market and replace it with the market tonnage. But then again, when you have the market tonnage that has to be uh, that has to be uh, uh, deployed within those, those uh, 10 specific days, you can only do it reasonably close to the latest. And by doing so, 